Okay, uh, welcome to another episode of Crime Page by Bodney Dawson. I'm here with Dr. Martin Terry. We're listening to classic country. I got to turn that off though because because of licensing reasons we can only play three seconds and I think I went overboard of licensed music. But we're going to check out a peyote population in uh, West Texas and Southwest Texas. That's right. Okay, so here we go. It's about a 40 minute drive. We're going to go show you what's going on down there. Nice, show you some nice limestone erotica and whatnot. And, uh, and hopefully you'll learn a thing or two. Ah, that's not right. Let's try this. Nah, that sounds too canned as well. Let's try this one. Okay, that's enough of that. Now that you feel like you're in some sexually overcharged new age massage parlor, let's get back to the video. Dr. Martin Terry, uh, tell us about some of your work you've been doing uh, with peyote, some of the issues facing its conservation, and uh, whatever else uh, you want to wax on about. Well, to touch on the population situation first, because it's in some ways the most painful, um, we've, we've reached a point in the development of two species, one of them human beings and the other uh, this uh, plant called um, Lophophora. They get along fine, those two species, as long as the population density is low enough. But uh, when you add, for example, the human element to that little equation, Funny things happen that influence um, the, the the amount of peyote that uh, remains, let's say, viable to have uh, the two species, humans and Lophophora, in uh, harmony. You could say. You could indeed say. Harmony. And sort of gonna turn this off for the licensing. Just press the button. Press the okay. button. Okay. I do like Chris Christopherson though. Oh, I do too. Look, look at oh shit. Wait. When you get the, the transition from volcanic to limestone, uh -huh. that's when, when things really get interesting. Yeah. Start getting all those limestone endemics. Lophophora is a limestone endemic. Uh-huh, for sure. You never see it growing on volcanic. There was a population at Big Bend, right, that was growing on volcanics, but it got wiped out by poachers. The interesting thing about that population yeah. is that it's theorized to, of course, been planted because you never see right. Lophophora, just like you never see aerocarpus growing uh, on anything but limestone. These goddamn clouds are amazing. Aren't they? Yeah. The yeah. Texas sky in the summer is one yeah. of the most beautiful sights. It really is. You know, it is. It's like paradise out here. Uh-huh. Beautiful in its desolation and the number of stars in the in the night sky. Yeah. Some of these stadies, these state cops are really Oh yeah. They're always nice, but they're super bored, man. Yeah. I've been stopped like six times in the last six months. Uh -huh. <laughs> See these road cuts are great too. Tufacious road cuts. Uh -huh. Nice volcanic ash. I seen a road cut yesterday that was like, uh, it was very silicic. It's uh -huh. all volcanic. The Ocotillo was growing on top of it. It loved really? it. Yeah, and the Ocotillo was only growing in this area on top of this really low density white volcanic rock. It's uh -huh. like, uh, it's basically, it's like a, maybe, it, I don't know what the steps are to turn it into opal, uh -huh. but this almost had the luster of opal, which wow. also tends to be associated with volcanic rock but this wasn't quite wasn't quite opal yet oh it was nice in the shade for a minute you know we got some nice west texas rain yeah. but now the sun's back out and it's back to being 90 degrees so <laughs> anyway we stopped at the side of the road right here this looks like it was almost uh, tumbled in a river like it would be tumbled in a riverbed that might be your first stop but you look at those rocks you can see they're not that well rounded you know, they still got a, a little bit of a geometry from out. Oh, the dog's taking a shit right there. Uh, anyway, uh, so it's unlikely that this was in a river, but it also, you know, is pretty, covers a pretty wide area going all the way down. So this is actually an old pyroclastic flow from a volcano. 
So a volcano blew up and you had a bunch of volcanic mud and boulders and, and whatnot tumbling down, you know, the side of the mountain blowing off, you know, 30 kilometer uh, radius. This was a, probably a pretty large explosion, would you say? I would say it's one of the best. And it uh, dates to uh, roughly 30 million, I would say Oligocene, Miocene, that's when most of the, the volcanism mm -hmm. in West Texas was going on. And of course, beneath all those volcanics, you have limestone from, uh, you know, 110 million year old oceans, but uh, the much younger volcanics are on top of it, and there's quite a bit. You can see this right here is good old rhyolite. It's got that nice purple texture to it and some small grain size. But you can see these, these rocks have been ensconced, encased in this uh, hillside right here for upwards of, you know, 25 to 30 million years. You can see they're just held together with all this uh, what was once volcanic mud. Well, it still is kind of volcanic mud. It really makes a nice, you know, rock mixture. You could take some of these for your rock garden. And nothing like uh, steaming hot uh, volcanic mud. Pyroclastic flows and lahars. Looking in the distance there, you know, those nice uh, volcanic rocks. See how there's not really any layers to them, distinct layers like one would see with limestone. And they're not a uh, light color. They're a darker color due to that presence of uh, iron. Looks like that might even be basalt over there. Layered basalt. Oh, look at that little oasis in the desert. Is, you got huh? you got your cottonwoods, you got your cattails. Yeah. Typhaceae, weird, weird family of monocots. Uh -huh. Some helenium. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. See those tiny yellow ligules? Mm -hmm. Mostly globose capitulum of little disc florets. Oh, look, that one's got seeds on it still. Got oh, the yeah. Achines. Yeah. Got some pink flamingos for accents. Oh, you still got some water. The rocks are mostly volcanic too, having been tumbled. Maybe there's some limestone yeah, here. Down, rolling down out of the mountain too. That. What's this right here? Huh? Mm -hmm. Looks like a. Let's see. The seed looks like a. Might be a brassica. I don't know this one. I don't know my aquatics. Mm -hmm. Okay, my head was obviously up my ass, and I don't know my aquatics. This doesn't look like a brassica at all. Those fruits look very distinct. Either carrot family, Apiaceae, or Aurelia family, Aureliaceae. And indeed, that's what this is. Aureliaceae is the family here. This is an aquatic plant known as hydrocotyle verticillata, very common in marshes and bags. And I want you to note that distinct peltate leaf shape, okay? Peltate like a little shield, see? Like a little umbrella on a stock. Mm -hmm. Kind of looks like a brassica fruit. No, it doesn't, you jackass. Oh, no, I don't know, five petals, that don't seem right. Mm -hmm. What the shit is this? I don't know my aquatic plants, it's too bad. Look at it, see how high the floodwaters get? You get a good flash flood? Oh, God, I'd love to see that. Nice flash flood in the desert. Hopefully there's no diamondbacks taking a nap out of the river. Goddamn, like a Steinbeckian paisano, you know? Taking a siesta drunk on some wine. Goddamn. See the limestone right here. We got a limestone bedrock. Oh! Got some little minnows in there. God, I bet back in the day before... Before you had ranchers drawn on this this water, this was the water level was probably up there. It was probably year round too. Ever get into aquatics, Martin? Only when I jump in. You got some azola in there, it's some quote unquote mosquito fern, which is a true fern. And then yeah. you got this. I don't know what this is. That's probably an angiosperm uh -huh. with the bigger leaves. I don't know. Don't quote me on it. Okay. But I know Azola when I see it. I'm going to take some of this in a little bag yeah. for my own little aquatic garden. Mm -hmm. Who's that over there? What's that? Oh. Okay, this here is a very common aquatic plant known colloquially as duckweed. It's related to monsteras and philodendrons and other house plants in the aeroid family, Eraceae. It can double its mass every two days if it's given enough sunlight and nutrients. And because of that, it's very commonly used for bioremediation purposes. It's edible. It can be used as a medicine. Might be horseshit though. And it's also used as fertilizer, okay? Very important plant and one of the most common aquatics you might see out there. Aquatic lifestyle, aquatic habitat, 
Who is that? Is it a brassica? Indeed it is. Four maris petals. I know a brassicaceous stigma whenever I see one. And you got six stamens. Just got a certain, you know, even if you don't want to get all, uh, you know, dictionary definition morphological with it, like you're reading the flora, you know, you just, uh, it's got a look to it. It's got a, a, a zeitgeist. Got a little fish in there too, you know. Sometimes in these freshwater desert oasises, you know, you get a, you know, a population, a larger population of fish before such an area becomes so arid, uh, will then get split up as the climate changes, you know, over thousands of years. And then you get uh, speciation. Get a Mojave Desert, you got a bunch of different species of puffish. I wonder what these little guys I see swimming around here. Are they native? Are they invasive? Are they uh, endemic to the region? And here we go, emerging from the oasis out into the hot and dry limestone to see what Dr. Terry has found. Okay, so here we are on the limestone. Okay, made the transition from the volcanics to the limestone. It gets a little patchy up north of us. Goes back and forth, but here we're just on the pure limestone. So tell me about, tell me about this little parcel of property, Dr. Terry. This little parcel of property uh, is basically um, what I had dreamed of all my life. Uh, I always loved West Texas, and this is about as West Texas as you can get here. Um, I also have a little thing for botany, and uh, it's surprising how much uh, variation you get in the in the plants that choose to grow and thrive on this uh, mostly limestone substrate here. You really see it too. I mean, when you you know when when you get limestone co-occurring with volcanics in the same area, like you go a mile north, there's volcanics. You Absolutely. could see the transition. You could see how abruptly the flora changes and the plant community changes just from having a different geology beneath it. Right. And sometimes altitude will will give you a, a totally different mixture of plants um, just, just by changing the altitude a little bit, making it uh, easier to freeze, uh, you know, in the winter and uh, easier to, to become hot in the, in the more interesting parts of the year. Oh. Only 120 million years ago was the bottom of a Cretaceous ocean. And now it's a perfect substrate for limestone endemic plants. Which Tasajillo is not one of them, but Tasajillo, bastard that it is, still produces a beautiful flower when it is going off. One of the meanest cacti in the Chihuahua Desert. See, they just hook onto you. Couple interesting plants as we ascend the limestone. We got a member of the family Celestracee. This is in the genus Mortonia, and you can see those beautiful imbricate leaves. Just like little roofing roof and shingle bracts, or uh, perhaps uh, snake scales. Thing's not flowering because it's dry as a bone, but uh, quite a few species of Mortonia. Mortonia sempervirens, Mortonia gregii. Uh, one or two more in Texas. Forms a small shrub. The foliage is beautiful. Not just the flowers. Flowers are kind of tiny. They do look uh, pretty good when they go off. Then of course this guy, uh, Encelia scoposa, which is actually, uh, should be in the genus Florenzia, according to molecular data. I sent a little piece of this. These are the leaves right here. It looks, just looks like grass, but you can see it is a shrub. It's got some woody tissue down there. There's the old scape. So there's a little yellow daisy flower about a foot tall when it is going off. There's some over there too. But I sent some leaf tissue to Alan Rockefeller. He sequenced it and it came out in the genus Florenzia, which the genus Encelia is sister to. Anyway, you know, what the, the genus that Encelia is most phylogenetically closest related, closely related to. But uh, yeah, that with tongue is really something else. Look at that, it looks like hell. But even when it looks like hell, it still looks pretty nice. God damn, look at those leaves. Ah, uh, so dry though. It's, a, it's been very dry, even for the for the Chihuahua Desert. In Celia Scaposa, one day we'll see it going off. Still alive, I think, beneath that tissue. Just, you know, these desert plants can just die back to that perennial woody tissue. But uh, they need some rain to go off. There's another one. See, you can see that there's the old flowers. 
All right, this one's extremely cool. This is a desert hibiscus, hibiscus coulteri. The flower's not open yet, but you can see that epicalyx, those spiky little bracts that subtend the flower right there. You can see it just coming up on limestone. This is mostly in Mexico. It mostly occurs in Mexico, but you get some in Arizona as well. Petrofa dioica, not so much so. But you do have a big a big tuber down there mm -hmm. from which these uh, re-sprout. You got any, what's going on? Is that about the flower or has that got leaves on it? Yeah, you got a couple leaves on there. <laughs> that here's hoping for some summer rain. Really? Look at that good old Euphorbia anti-syphilitica. Looking healthy, unfazed by the heat and drought. Look at it, you got the cryptogamic soils and everything. Look at it. The lichens and whatnot. I don't see, I don't see too much of that on the volcanics though. The, the lichens mostly seem to like the more calcareous base. Oh, there's a there's an old aerocarpus. Oh indeed. See they get that weird beige cuticle when they yeah, die. Yeah. It's been, you don't think there's a little life left in that one? I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Down looks, in the center. Looks like it might have fallen fallen victim to the drought. It could be. I, I wish I'd brought a stake to market just to, you know, every time I come back, I like to, to check on things that, uh, right. you know, was it alive or was it dead? But we know they're here at least. Oh, yes. Oh, those clouds are so nice. And when that cloud goes, it's going to get so unpleasant. <laughs> oh, that guy's still alive. Look at that. He's still got some life left in him. Maybe I'll come back and pour some water here. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. We I got some right there. Yeah, we got some right there. We'll be fine. Just get a little bit, let it, let it, give it enough to trickle down. Mm -hmm. Trickle down economics. <laughs> Doesn't really work in real life for people, but maybe for the area carpets it'll work, huh? Woo, it's a hot one. Yes, it is. Not as bad as it could be, but it's pretty hot. Right. We're starting to get some resurrection fern, which isn't a fern at all. Selaginella lepidophila. Look at that. There's that Mortonia sempervirens again with those beautiful limbercid leaves. Oh, god damn, I love the limestone, don't you? Kissing Angel, good morning. Let her know you think about her when you're gone. Now we come up on its ridge. It's still hot as balls, but we got a nice breeze. Oh, look at that sky. Look at that vista. Damn, and there we go. There's our first loaf. Poor oh, bastard. Wow. We gotta we gotta build a little a little shelter for him. Yeah. And maybe give him some water. I'll give him some water. Yeah, we'll do that. Get this guy some water. Poor guys, man. Look at that. They're just yeah, cooking, man. They are. We're gonna build a little, put some ridges, put some racks around and build them a little a little enclave. Uh-huh. There we go. That's good. We built them a little. We built him a little cave in yeah. there. He's in there. How does shit the Selaginella do it? <laughs> How does it go? It's still alive. It's not dead. It's just right. dormant. Yeah. Poikilohydric. <laughs> How does it? Oh, look, there's a loaf too. There's a dead peyote. I, it might be uh, still alive underneath. Oh, yeah. The, oh, yeah, you're right. The stem could, because they just regenerate from the stem. Mm -hmm. It might just pop out a new head when it gets some rain. Yeah. Time the tops dying. That's a plant. That's that's a cactus that's built yeah. for the heat and the drought, and it's just just yeah. getting cooked. That's it. Yeah, that's a that's a grandpa loaf. Uh -huh. Look at that. Look at that. Just hiding out. Yeah, yeah. He's he's fine though. I mean, oh, he's absolutely. He'll be fine. He's, he's thanking just, us. Yeah. He's got some. How deep down you think that goes? Ten inches maybe. I wouldn't think that much here in this climate. Thick stem maybe, maybe goes maybe six, maybe six inches, but maybe there's little, little roots at the smaller yeah, roots. That go. These guys, and then you just start looking, and they're everywhere. You just yes, see how, how perfectly they adapt. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. That's a look at that big guy, that big bastard down there. <laughs> you know, ideally, you know, when it rains, of course, they'll swell up a little bit. Yeah, and they really do if, if it's a decent rain. And how does shit? Echinocactus horizontalonis. He's hiding beneath this Echinocereus. Yeah. But uh, these things are just, they're indestructible. Look oh, at it. Yeah, yeah. No hairs on there, just a thick, glaucous, waxy cuticle, and then a bunch of spines. Uh huh. Horizontalonis. Yeah. And of course, but the Echinocereus can use its spines as a kind of UV protectant as well. That's true. That's for sure. 
Petrofa dye a week is supposed to be good for the toothache? Yeah. Wow, no shit. Well, you just, you probably just chew on a stem or something, I'd assume, I huh? Think, yeah. Yeah. See, they got an astrolepus. They did get some oh, rain here. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. one of the coolest genera of fern in the Teredacea. Look, the, the silage is out too. Oh, you see, wow. it's green. Yeah. yeah, they must have gotten a little bit of rain. I think they did. I wonder if it was that. enough to soak in, though. Maybe not. They're that healthiest one yet. Look at these. Oh, beautiful color on them. Unfazed. Uh -huh. Why are they doing so well here? Oh, They're fully exposed. Yes, That's kind of odd. That has always puzzled me. Oh, you know what? Because they must get the runoff right exactly. off the rocks exactly. from the exactly. rain. Uh -huh. So even a little bit of rain sure, it goes down just, into the crack just funnels go. right into yep. them. Yep. Look at a plump little Ooh. bastard. Oh, he's doing good. <laughs> oh my. That guy's looking a little rough, but uh, he's okay. He'll that's make... an ideal spot, though. Yeah, because it's just just like how plants on the side of the road yeah, yeah. thrive uh -huh. after rain because they're getting all the runoff. Same deal here. Mm -hmm. Happy little happy little loaf. Yeah. Look at this guy. Look at that guy. Do you see him? Okay. See him? Look at it. Uh, yeah, I see him right there. There he is. He's hiding right there. Oh, look at that. That's great. That's superb. Put his little, put his little happy home back up right, on top of him. Yeah. I got to put it back the right way. Right. Because that was working for him, obviously. <laughs> look, we got Areocarpus too. Look at that guy growing ensconced in the rock. Oh. See, but he's still got some dieback. Wow. You could tell the drought's hitting him a little bit, and then you mm -hmm. get a little red mm -hmm. Hotropha dioica flower right there. But he's yeah. doing good too. Just collecting all the runoff. So even the most minuscule rain just uh -huh. gives them a chance to right. get those roots to uh, suck up the moisture and get inflated. Sure. Yeah, these, you know, these cacti, they never get so looking at these guys. They're yeah. always cool because they just, Absolutely. just how they grow, ensconced in the rock, growing where they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. The beautiful geometry, the beautiful, they're just beautiful plants even when not in flower. Right. Oh you, oh, you could hear a thunder way off in the oh, distance. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> I'm sweating like a whore in church, but that cloud covers. I still got that. There, you got three right there. Huh, Louie? It is kind of hot. Areocarpus, those poor bastards. These get poached all the time, and they sold on sold on Etsy for like 300 bucks. You're kidding me. No, all the time it happens, and then when. When you confront the people about it, they always say, "Oh yeah, it was, I was, it was uh, from private property. Uh, I, uh, yeah, right. I was, I was rescuing them. They were gonna build a road there." <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's why you're selling it for five hundred bucks on the internet, <laughs> sleaze bag. I always, I'm used to seeing them, you know, hiding beneath the euphorbia, mm -hmm. anti-syphilitica, but they're just growing right at the base of Ocotillos here. Absolutely, they're doing good. Look at it. Mm -hmm. Not even that wrinkled for how. Fucking bone dry it is out of here. <laughs> and he's, he's tilted to catch the morning sun, you know, in the winter. That helps a lot. But it, this guy, look at that. Look how rough up he is. Yeah. You think he's going to pull through, though? Uh huh. You think he'll make it? Just got to give him a little bit of moisture. Look at that. Oh, man, look at that. Look at how uh -huh. deflated. Yeah. Spiritually deflated. <laughs> Like like most of us these days, right? We'll build a little. Uh, we'll build a little shelter around. You gonna give him some water? Yeah, I am. I like you didn't drink any of that. You've made, <laughs> you've mostly right. given it to the plants. I love it. That's right. <laughs> so Ocotillos get that little papery wax. Yeah, yeah. Looks like yeah, like it looks like wax. parchment paper. Huh. I, I'm not sure what you would call it. I, I, it I, seems to be an adaptation to uh, the heat though. To the what? The to heat? the heat. Yeah, it's yeah, just it yeah. doesn't it doesn't get that hot. It Might probably reflects well sunlight. Be. And there's a little bit of an air barrier between the layers there. Mm -hmm. Oh, Senegalia romeriana. Smells so good. A mimosoid legume. So mimosa subfamily of the Fabaceae and it produces these little white uh, powder poof inflorescences that smell incredible when it's blooming. Really? And again, yeah, a runoff hypothesis. Look at that. This this selaginella is photosynthetically active and going off because it's getting all the all the rainwater even the, the lightest rain yeah. just runs right down into it exactly. god it's such an incredible plant mm -hmm. talk about fractal geometry right there look oh, at that yeah. oh that's nice when will it curl up again how much maybe in a couple days yeah no more than a couple uh, days this lichen it's like oh, bird shit lichen crustose bird shit lichen oh. incredible 
Yeah. Got a thick thallus. Mm -hmm. Able to uh, exist in this brutal heat. <laughs> and today's a mild day. Uh -huh. Look at that little echinocactus, horizontalonius. What's he doing? Look at it, he's like the size of a quarter. He's being smart, growing in the shade of the uh, grandma. Shit, look at this guy. Look at it, he's really ensconced. Look at that. Like a softball sized kind of cactus horizontalonius down there. Oh, look, it's a punch of rufida. Only grows in West Texas in the United States. In Mexico, it's a little bit more common. But you can see it doesn't have any spines. It's just got those aerials full of uh, glockids, little fiberglass hairs. And at the base of it, you got a beautiful little yacht, a beautiful little peyote. How old? How long has it been hanging out there doing its thing? Smart, growing in the shade right here. Listen to me, anthropomorphize. How about that? And then over here we got, oh, that's nice. Hamato cactus, formerly furrow cactus. Hamato cactus, hematocanthus. It grows in the Rio Grande Valley too. But I think it's, it might be a different subspecies. But anyway, this was considered a ferro cactus, which is the genus of barrel cactus for a long time, until molecular sequencing uh, realized, made it evident that it was more closely related to the genus Hematocactus. And it does have those little recurved spines. You can see that. See how at the, how at the end right there, they got a little fish hook? Got a beautiful plant though. Look at those betalane pigments in there. Nice. Oh, that whole slab of limestone's about to come off. How about that? Yeah. Part of a Cretaceous sea. Just about to give way. Oh my God, there's one right there too. Just a tiny little, this guy's looking kind of rough though. Yeah. Got all the red stress pigments. Just growing right out of a little crack. A little plumber's crack in the uh, limestone. Oh, look at this. Echinocereus daziacanthus. Rainbow hedgehog. Nice, nice pink beta lanes up top. Looks healthier than everybody else. None of the silage, even though it did rain a few days ago, none of the silage is uh, wet up there. It's still too dry. And look at that. Look at it. We got a rainstorm coming. You can see the shadow moving towards us. And the wind is picking up. We're going to get dumped on. And it's going to smell real nice. And most importantly, it's going to give us some cover from that mean ass sun that's behind me that's been cooking us all day. Look at that too. Look at that. See that? Growing right there. They're hiding everywhere. Right, the, right near the Euphorbia antisyphilitica. It may not cure syphilis, but it does provide good cover for Lophophora, for the peyotes to grow in. Okay, case in point to that former statement. Look at this beast. Look at that. Two of them. No, you got three of them. There's one back there too. Look how massive that is. Such a beautiful specimen. <laughs> it just never gets old. Just you're saying the same thing over and over again. Look at it, peyote porn. I feel like one of those stoners in the 90s looking at high times. Granted, I've never actually uh, eaten peyote, nor nor would I. You know, if I was gonna do mescaline, I pro I prefer the synthetic. Cause you gotta eat like six of these heads to feel anything. It's just not, you know, I, I'd feel like a dick. I'd take a, a spiritual journey and realize I was an asshole. Which I think most people do, so that's why that's why a lot of people have bad trips. They realize they're assholes. You can't bullshit yourself while you're on psychedelics. Oh God, I hope it rains like hell. Look at it, look at that euphoria, isn't it? It just looks like a damn, looks like some sort of coral. Oh, that air's coming in. We got a cold front coming in. Look, it's dumping over there, it's dumping. Anyway, that's all I got for you tonight. It's windy as hell. Can't wait to see this storm. I can't wait to smell this storm. That's all I got for you this evening. Have a good rest of your day. Go fuck yourself. Bye. All right, you want to go? Let's go. Come on. Look at this. She's so good. She's just waiting. She's waiting while I do my neurotic shit. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Time to get out of here. We've got a nor'easter coming. That smell is so nice. People try to bottle that smell, but you can't. It's the petrichor mixing with the creosote. Oh, that's good. Look at all that. There's some good rain right there. Yes. 
Yes! Uh... <laughs> yeah, we had a good day, huh? <laughs> I think maybe so.